Hello, I'm Dr. Larry Carnes, and welcome to Spotlight TV. We're so glad that you could join us for this very exciting episode. Want to welcome you back. We have a very special guest with us today, Mr. James Willis, and we're going to be speaking about this powerful book, Three Degrees and Gone. Mr. Willis, how are you today, sir? I am fine. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. We're so honored to have you on with us today as our guest. Do something for us and introduce yourself to our viewing audience. Well, a man who spent his life wanting to write books and finally in his old age is doing it. Uh, I've been an Army officer and a professor of physics at college. I've been a mayor of China, Washington, Virginia. I've done a lot of things, but life keeps you busy. And later in life, I find some time and I'm writing books now. I've written seven of them. So that's what I'm doing. Seven books. Right. That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm Something interesting I saw here as I was researching, this statement is made. He was called man, and after he came, nothing was the same. That's a very interesting statement. Talk to us about that statement that you made. Well, mostly I was referring to environmental situation in the country is in right now. And the, the fact that if man, nature just existed by itself, it would get along happily. But man comes in and tries to modify everything and things start changing. And then now we're in a position that we've got some climate changes. And so I, I kind of considered that and, and the idea of coastal flooding and wondered what happens to, to Americans who suddenly found their homes are flooded out on the coast where do they go? What do they do? And that's the basis of the book. Wow. That's good, good, good. So now, with that being said, I was looking here at chapter one. And as I began to look, I saw some dates that caught my attention. I see part one, Texas City. Then you say, let me see, the fall of 2086, Frank worked for a petroleum company. And when I looked at that date, I said 2086. That caught my attention. Talk to us about that. Well, what I'm kind of implying is that 65 years from now, we may be in, in trouble. And so I, I picked that as a date. It's a kind of a vague date that I think temperature in this world may rise by three degrees and that may cause some problems. That, that's the title of the book. And uh, mm. so we put, I look at three different coastal areas in the book and people being displaced and Texas is one of them. Um, Houston is, is famous for being kind of low and being flooded these days. Yes. I look about that, that as the future. So, 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 okay, Texas City. So a three degree increase will have such a dramatic impact on the environment, not only in, and Texas has been identified as one of those places. Right. How, how, traumatic will that be with that three degree increase? Well, I'm, I'm talking about four or five degrees of water, right? Four or five f feet of water rising. And that, that has tremendous impact on areas like that, especially if you combine it with heavy rains and hurricanes, which I'm saying are gonna pick up and the flooding that naturally occurs in Houston from heavy rains, it all combines to create damage and destruction. Yes. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Houston is, I think, the, it is it the fourth largest city in the United States. And if it's having an impact on Houston like that, how traumatic will it be in other cities who may not be as well developed as Houston? Well, let, let, let's think about uh, New Orleans. Will it have an impact on New Orleans like some other things we've seen? Well, the book kind of implies that New Orleans has been written off the, the books. It's gone. And the Miami's gone. Um, oh, so, yeah, Houston's still surviving, but barely. And so a lot of coastal cities are being destroyed by this kind of thing. My goodness. Let me ask you this question. This is something I've thought about over the years. When we see development, and you mentioned man and man's part in development, when we see development and man building cities that go further out into the, the, the ocean and into the sea, you know, we just build higher, does that have an impact on what you're speaking about? And is that why you say Houston, uh, New Orleans is gone and you say Miami is going to be gone also? Yep. Uh, all these cities that have been built uh, on lowlands 
are going to be in trouble. My. And, uh, you know, when some of them can, can put walls around them, and New Orleans is already trying to do that, but it, when the water gets higher and higher, it's going to be difficult. My. So with the building of these levees and things of that nature, you're saying those man-made attempts to prevent something catastrophic from happening isn't going to be successful. It, probably not in a lot of ways, unless you're really going to spend the money on it. Maybe New York City did. I don't address New York City in the book, but you can conceive of New York City trying to survive and maybe not. Yes, yes, yes. So now when we look at the impact, Mr. Willis, and I, I'm, I'm thinking from this perspective now, when you talk, California came to mind. How is it going to be impacted? Well, I've kind of considered this being fighting fires and not being part of what I'm talking about with the ocean, but I didn't spread it that far. My goodness. The whole nation is, is going to be in trouble. Yes, uh, sir. This is fiction. You got to realize. So I'm imagining this may be true, may not be true, but what happens if, if it really is true? Yeah, I noticed people that the have people have to immigrate. They have to get away from these places. Mm. Where do they go? My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. You know, and so I'm, I'm thinking as I was looking at the book, yeah, it's very futuristic. And you were projecting and looking at some things. And I thought, you know, this is something that we may need to give some attention to because it speaks toward the possibilities of what could happen should we continue to move in the direction that we're moving in when it comes to climate control and things of that nature. I think, think that we, we have to do that. I don't think people are really thinking about it in that extent. At this stage of the game, perhaps we should be. But if you now speaking, this, this what becomes, this becomes an immigration story, or what it becomes an immigration story, right? Wow, wow, that is interesting. Why do, speak to that, uh, un, unpack that a little bit for us and speak about that. It becomes an immigration story. Well, if you got everybody moving away from the coast, you've got to find places to go, jobs to perform, things to do. And the natural direction for people to go is to Canada. Oh. And, and what, what, what I picture is Canada being much like our southern border today and trying to prevent the immigration because it's going to overpower them. And so they're, they're building walls and putting up uh, te technology to, to keep these people from going across the border. And so my story becomes a story of three families trying to cross the border into Canada. My goodness. So now, okay, a story of three families attempting to cross the border to get into Canada, escaping the United States because of the environmental changes that we're seeing. Talk right. to us a little bit about that. What are some interesting points that you would like people to know about the book without giving them the entire book? Well, these, these people all gather in Chicago because of, they've got a coyote there that's going to escort them to the, cross the border. And one of the ways that they're going to go is, is through Montana uh, on the Indian Reservation, Blackfoot Indian Reservation, and the Blackfeet are helping them. Yes. Uh, so they come to the border, and when they get to the border, they have to face the technology, and they have to tr try to sneak across to the sex technology. Some of them make it. Some of them act once someone actually only gets shot, has to go back and recover before he tries again. And so there's a little variety in what goes on. What happens when the people are captured and don't, don't make it? Uh, they get deported back to the States. What happens to them? It all, it all plays out in the book. So it's actually, if I'm hearing you correctly, we're talking about now a reversal of what's taking place here in the United States. Now people in the United States are going to become the people who are trying to escape and cross the border to get into Canada, as opposed to people we see now trying to cross the border to get into the United States. That's right. That's that right. is interesting, quite interesting, quite interesting. What would be some facts that you would like to share with our audience or some precautions that we may need to take? Let me ask this question. Is it preventable? Well, you, you ask a novelist who's making up things whether it's preventable. Um, yeah, you know, that environmental problems are something that we can attack, um, but it's awful late in the game now. 
and uh, trying to, you know, he, Congress has gotten a bill, a bill before it that it's got all kinds of other stuff in it about college tuition and this kind of stuff and so forth. But the environment is part of that package and it's not getting passed. We're not wow. doing anything. You know, I was looking at the book, researching your book, and I saw some of the interaction and some dialogue that was taking place within the family and some of the hostilities that were occurring, I guess, because of the difficulties they were facing in trying to do, do what needed to be done. I thought quite interesting as I began to look at the interaction in the family and it caused a lot of discomfort, a lot of uh, turbulence, if you will, within that family unit. Well, the Texas family unit, of course, has been stymied there for a long time in a board environment, a uh, very structured environment. And it's a hard way to live and people are stopping at each other and become unhappy with each other. And that's one of the reasons they try to leave and get away from that. So. All right. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I noticed that. That's quite interesting, quite interesting. It is, it is really an interesting read. And as you're navigating the journey with these families and their attempts to escape, if you will, to find some sense of solitude in a place where they are actually going to become immigrants. It is quite interesting when you look at it from that perspective. So I thought it's such a fascinating read as you're futuring and talking about the possibility of some things that occur. We have about two minutes remaining. So I would like for you to do this for me. Share with our viewing audience, take about 60 seconds, share with our viewing audience information that you would like to disseminate, be it website, email, blog, or anything that you'd like to share. 60 seconds, sir. Okay. I'm Jay Stewart Willis. That's what I use for the book. And the Stewart is the S-T-E-W form of the Stewart. So that, that's what you look at when you look up for the book on Amazon or someplace like that. I have a website. It's jstuartwillisbooks.com. And uh, jstuartwillis7 at gmail.com is my email. And I'm glad to answer any questions anybody has, either one of them. Excellent, excellent. We want to thank you so much for being our guest here and giving us some insights into something that perhaps many of us hadn't even given thought to. And it's something three degrees and gone. It's an amazing read when we look at the possibilities, the potential of New Orleans already being gone, Florida already being gone, and then Houston being threatened because of the environment and we talk about, you know, the different things that are taking place. We want to thank you all for joining us and watching us right here on Spotlight TV. Remember to always tune in. I've been your host, Dr. Larry Carnes, and don't forget to join us again next month right here for Spotlight TV.